Last Saturday after Dynamite went off the air, Eddie Kingston and Penta El Cerro Miero came to the rescue and chased off the elite and the Matt Hardy family office. And Eddie Kingston then had these inspiring words for the AEW fans on hand at Daly's Place. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jungle Boy. What you saw tonight from this young man, and I don't like kissing nobody's ass. You know me, I hate it. It's a little weird. Bottom line is, this man is the future of this great sport. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Christian. We have a legend. Ladies and gentlemen, do not forget. Hey, yeah, I'm putting you over. Don't make fun of me later about it. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is a legend, and we are proud to have him here. And look. Oh. And now, of course, I just got to say, me and my best friend are going to really, really kick the out of the Bucks Wednesday. I like, I wish I came up with that, man. That's a great gimmick. What's up, brother? Good to see you. Hey. No, 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 no. Thank you. Thank you. But it's not about me. Let's put it to you like this. It's about Jungle Boy, Christian, Penta. It's about everyone in that locker room. It's about AEW. Every week. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Because the competition sometimes doesn't want to hear their fans. Well, guess, oh. Oh, I guess I'm burning another bridge, surprise. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, AEW cares about their fans. Because we are not here just to get our, ourselves a paycheck. We're here every week with you people, without you people, and we come out here and we bust our asses. Because we love, we love professional wrestling. I will give the devil his due, but you saw a match between Kenny Omega and my dude Jungle Boy that you will not see on the other channel. You will not see legends who are respected on the other channel. You will not see people like me and my best friend on the other channel. And you will not see the heart that everybody in that locker room has on the other channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I was supposed to send you home happy, but I'm speaking from my heart. And the bottom line is this. We are AEW. We will see you Wednesday, and we want to hear you. champion, I may not like him, but he does the so long good night, all that jazz. I'm just gonna say a little New York thing. Try the veal, tip your waitress, get home safe.
everyone to Elevation. Welcome to All Elite Wrestling, where you are ringside with the stars of AEW, Tony Schiavone and the one and only Solid G, Ultimate G, big man himself, all white. Thank you very much, Tony, and I'm excited tonight to get Elevation going. Listen to this crowd, let's give them some wrestling. Let's go to Justin Roberts in the ring. Tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by the wingmen at a combined weight of 509 pounds, the team of J.D. Drake and the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth. Uh, uh, Paul, okay, uh, maybe I'm not, uh, maybe I'm not cool enough, but what's the hell is this pinky thing? I don't know. I think that's to show that maybe they're an upper class. I just. I don't understand why Ryan Nemeth is walking around with an Oswald. I don't think he earned that. No, he, he continues to say that you can see me on many TV shows, many movies. I, I haven't seen him yet. I haven't seen him either. And their opponents from Orlando, Florida, at a combined weight of 486 pounds, Colton and Billy Gunn. I always get excited when I know the Paul White's getting ready to call a Billy Gunn match. <laughs> well, it's no, it's no secret to anyone that Billy Gunn's been one of my friends for the past 25 years. He is a brother from another mother. But what's killing me right now, I'm looking at Billy Gunn. It's like this guy has found the fountain of youth. Amazing, isn't it? He looks amazing. And there's his son, Colton, who, by the way, Colton is 19-0. He has not lost a match in AEW. That says a lot. Oh, he's just got incredible talent, incredible focus, you know. Just love to see Billy in his corner advising his young man on his career. Big things. All right, Billy Gunn will let Colton start here, and he'll start against the uh, Hollywood hunk himself, Ryan Nemeth. Oh, Fireman's carry takeover, nicely done. He just wants to, I mean, it's obvious what he wants to do here, right? Just show him up. Well, yeah, and, you know, and Ryan Emmett is smart, too. If he can rattle Colton, who might be a rookie in this situation, Ryan Emmett's got an extensive amateur wrestling background. Colton Gunn's a tremendous athlete. But again, when you're dealing with an amateur background, has such an advantage in pro wrestling. Billy doing a little bit of coaching that time, and Aubrey Edwards had to move him back to his corner. And quickly a tag, and here comes a much different wrestler. And down he goes in the arm drag, and Colton up with a great drop kick. Look at that high drop kick. Man, you can't teach athletic ability. It's just gifted. J.D. Drake is in there, and buddy, he is a load. He is strong, powerful, and he can throw a drop kick for a guy that size. My God, one, two. Colton got in a little bit of trouble there. I think he was a little surprised at J.D. Drake's athletic ability. Blue collar badass with them fancy boots can move around. Now the blue collar badass has him in the corner and working him over there with uh, Ryan Nemeth. You know, you saw that uh, Peter Avalon, or pretty Peter Avalon, and Cesar Bonomi out, the wingmen, all together. And you, you got to say, uh, Peter Avalon, for as obnoxious as he is, has surrounded himself with some pretty darn good athletes. Uh, he's, he's built quite the stable. Yes, he has. You know, Cesar Bonomi is one incredible, impressive athlete. All right. Uh, and uh, I don't really know what Ryan's doing here. Uh, well, I... Is that some kind of a floss thing? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not up to the dance with all the new kids. That, that's, that's kind of a Pee Wee Herman dance. Remember uh, Big Top yes, Pee Wee? Yes, I know Pee Wee's Herman big very adventure. well. Oh. You know him? You know? I do know Pee Wee. Oh, man. Big Pee Wee guy. I uh, never thought I'd ever say that. Now his business is picking up now. Oh, boy, here comes Billy. He just wants to tear somebody's head off every time he throws that clothesline. You know, you're right about the founder. You look at look at him. Look at his body. He is just in such immense shape. Tremendous shape, tremendous cardio shape. And he's got all that experience, years of being an incredible tag team competitor, world tag team champion. Look at the fans respond to this. Meanwhile, Colton from the outside, Billy tried a running knee lift that time, and the hunk was going to go for a neck breaker and had to. Uh, oh, there it is. 
Well, Ryan Nemeth always wanted to be famous. The Famouser putting down. Here are your winners. The team of Colton and Billy. Good. All that power and all that weight going down on top of you, not gonna get up, Paul. Yeah, Billy Gunn's got those legs like tree trunks. He's got that impressive vertical leap. <laughs> Just drives his hamstrings right in the back of Ryan Emma's head, from face first in the mat. And Aubrey gets a hug, whether <laughs> she wants one or not. Yeah, big old sweaty Bill Gunn. Here it is again, Paul. Watch how quick Billy gets into this. That's the experience that Billy has. No messing around, no showboating. Right away, go to the finisher, use that athletic ability and that size, get the win over Ryan Nemeth. The Gun Club, Billy and Colton Gunn are your winners in our opening bout this week on Elevation. All right, we are here on Elevation. It's great to have you with us, Tony Schiavone, and the one, the only big man himself, Paul White. Paul, we have a lot of great women's acts. We've got Rio coming up. We got a Carlos Sheeta, the former champion. We got Thunder Rosa. We got a big trios match. And this Wednesday, Dynamite is back at its regular time slot on TNT. It will be the Young Bucks against Eddie Kingston and Penta El Cedo Miedo. Kingston and Penta can earn a title shot with the win this Wednesday. But tonight on Elevation, it'll be Kingston and Penta against TH2, employees of Matt Hardy. And we know that Hardy is looking for payback after they stopped him from finishing off Christian Cage last week on Dynamite. We know that Matt Hardy is looking to cost him any chance at the Tag Team Championship shot. Eddie Kingston and Penta El Cerro Miero against Angelico and Jack Evans tonight in our main event. This contest is set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Penelope Four. Really a talented young lady here in this next matchup. Penelope's got a solid record at six and one, and not only that, great athleticism, but improving week by week. From North Caldwell, New Jersey, Valentina Rossi. All right, That's one of the things I've noticed too about Penelope. As she's come out here in elevation, you see her confidence gets a little bit better every week as she's sure. improving. She's starting to really get in the groove and feel it now. You know, she's got that impressive six and one record, getting better every week. A show like elevation gives her that opportunity to really improve and work on her craft. And uh, Valentina Rossi, who, by the way, is wrestling her second match here in AEW, has a ballet background, and she's a big girl, man. She's, uh, she's going to be a tough challenger for Penelope. Yeah, I was really impressed just there by Penelope's shooting Valentina across the ring in the corner. She put her whole body into that shoot into the corner. Smart. Use all the weight you can. Especially when you have a little bit of a size disadvantage like Penelope is now. Face first, sending Rossi in, and... Oh, man, look at oh. that. That's vicious. That's vicious and inventive. I think I need to write that down and save that in my repertoire book. I like that. Valentina, by the way, trained by Sean Spears of the Pinnacle. And inside cradle one, two. Not bad. Nicely done by Rossi. And a running Larry at that time. Down goes Penelope for a second time. Missed that. Pump kick and put her, I think it really hit her with the heel of her boot that time. Yeah, right in the chin. That just shows that flexibility that Penelope has. She tried at that handspring and was caught. Sends her in. Pick up. Penelope's got her up. And drops her right across the midsection. One, two, three. Here's your winner, Penelope Ford. Pretty impressive by Penelope. She kept her mind in the game, used the ring to her advantage. Definitely improving every week here on Elevation. Good for her. Penelope Ford now goes to seven and one. 14 and one in her past one-on-one -on -one singles matches, by the way. Look at this. It takes some athletic ability and great timing to do that. Strength too. Yes, sir. It's always impressive to see a smaller opponent to be able to lift and handle a bigger opponent like that. Well job, Penelope. 
Up next on AEW in singles competition, Brian Cage versus Serpentico. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Soon to be making his way to the ring from Chico, California. Weighing 274 pounds, the FTW World Heavyweight Champion, The Machine, Brian Cage. Quite an ovation for Brian Cage, and why not? This is one of the great athletes we have here in AEW. Impressive athlete. Trained by the late, great Chris Canyon. Brian brings a plethora of skills to the ring. Size, strength, power, and technical skill. And his opponent to be accompanied to the ring by Luther from San Juan, Puerto Rico, weighing 175 pounds, Sir Pentico. Sir Pentico out with Luther. Well, that's a, it's really a size difference here that's pretty stark. But the fact that Luther has come out with Serpentico, you never know what's going to happen. This is a, a very odd combination. Odd is a great way of describing it. Sometimes Serpentico is the bat and Luther swings the bat. Luther has a lot of intimidating factors that Brian Cage is not bothered with at all. Brian Cage is a season pro. He knows that's all pomp and circumstance. That's all show. I mean, we all we all know Luther's a little bit crazy. He's a few cards short of a full deck. Not a good idea on Sir Pentico's part to charge into Brian Cage. No, not at all. Cage is just going to take full advantage of the size differential. Also, we need to mention, and we should, that we're out here with Brian Cage, other members of Team Taz, including Powerhouse Hobbs and Hook, the son of Taz. Taz is put together quite a crew here man these are great athletes all around that's a little embarrassing for Serpentico to get curled and then SOS right over oh. Luther taking a free shot and team Taz not even worried about it Serpentico using the quickness stomped him on the back in this situation Serpentico's got to rely on that quickness he gets into a trade-off situation with Brian Cage. It's not going to go well. Whoa. Well, Cage can do so many things. And oh, here goes Luther again. Now sending Cage to the barricade. And Serpentico through the ropes of the Tope Suicida. I didn't understand a thing Luther said. He was shrieking. No. What him and Vicky would be like in a karaoke yeah. contest. Whoa. Man. Nice kicks or Pentagon. Nice follow up with the DDT. Can yep. he do it? One, two. Powerful kick out by Brian Cage. I thought it was interesting that uh, Luther went over to the other side and got in the face of Hook and Powerhouse Hobbs, and he just kind of shrugged him off like, leave us alone. Well, they got so much confidence in the guy in the ring, what he can do. He's like that crazy guy that hangs out in front of the drugstore. You just try to ignore him. And he's calling the shots from the outside. He's had head body, man. Sepetico is throwing his own head as if Luther was doing it. Did you see that? I know. That was a little odd. By remote, like a like a human video game. Oh. Uh, well, if you had to go on average on who takes the most pain, Serpentico, pound for pound, is going to be one of the toughest guys in AEW. Waistlock pick up. Wow. Release German. Brian Gage just walking the walk, enjoying influencing his will. Spetko's in a lot of trouble. Oh, this, this I don't think is necessary at all. That might have been necessary. Yeah, boy, Luther takes a tumble and Cage. Oh, he's going to break him in half here, Paul. Oh, running. That is a release power bomb from the outside in. Have Over you ever, the top I rope. I, I, I don't know if I've ever seen that. I don't think I've ever. I thought he was going to power bomb him on the stage. Just again, showing the power that Brian Cage possesses. Standing suplex. Whoa. Into the drill claw. One, two, three. There is 
your winner, the machine, Brian Cage. I say if that was Mortal Kombat, that'd be a flawless victory for Brian Cage. And he had Hobbs and Hook on the outside. Didn't come to help him at all when Luther was attacking him on the outside, which is kind of odd. Such impressive power by Brian Cage. Here's a drill claw. Boom. This really sets that drill going. It's good for powerhouse Hobbs and Hook to be ringside. To watch a veteran like Brian Cage, his tempo, how he executes in the ring. It's good for the whole group. FTW to stay together. They're looking good. Well, they, they don't seem to be too impressed at all with Brian Cage. I don't, I'm not sure. Our next match here on Elevation will feature Carl Anderson of the Elite in singles competition. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Tokyo, Japan, weighing 220 pounds, Carl Anderson. Oh, man. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't take my eyes off of Nick Jackson. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah, I've seen a chain like that on a pocket watch, but never on a hat. Looks like he was going fishing, got all hooked in there. And yeah. Well, anyway, here comes uh, Carl Anderson, the gunner, machine gun Carl Anderson of the Good Brothers and of the Elite. This is pure intimidation here, Paul. You know that as well as I do. Uh, intimidation or just flat out just being cocky. These guys are in the groove. They've worked all over the world together, and they're feeling the power and glory. His opponent from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing 191 pounds, Wheeler, Utah. Wheeler, Utah, making his AEW debut. I've seen uh, Utah wrestle many, many times, Philadelphia native. Cut his teeth in Chikara. Orange Cassidy, Chuck Taylor, late Mr. Brody Lee all came from there. And you can do a lot of things. So let's see what he'll do here against. Well, there you go. Well, hopefully there'll be a one-on-one -on -one competition between Machine Gun Carl Anderson and Wheeler Utah. But you know, with the sidekicks hanging outside the ring, we'll see. Wow. Carl Anderson, look at the demeanor. I don't think people understand how mean Carl Anderson is. He's got a vicious mean streak. He enjoys inflicting pain, he enjoys punishing, he enjoys embarrassing opponents. Pick up, Yuda. Good leapfrog using his quickness. The kid can go, man. Look at that drop. Yes, kick. he can. Very fluid, very nice. Get a steam. Anderson's hurting, man. Anderson is hurting, and Gallo's got the attention of Yuta, and boom! Spine buster. Spine buster out of that. So well executed. Carl Anderson gives one of the best spine busters I've seen since Arn Anderson. The gunner is very athletic, man, and I, look at this. Uncalled for, absolutely doesn't need to do this. But he enjoys it, Tony. Yeah, I guess so. But he grinding that elbow in oh, the eye socket. Just man, the point of the elbow into the right eye of Yuta. That's just nasty. Tomorrow, Yuta's going to have a big black eye and be swollen shut just from that. Yeah, absolutely. Pick up here. Belly to back. And a cover. Here it is again. One, two. Two, says our referee, Bryce Rimsburg. Good fight by Will. And here's how smart Carl Anderson is right now. He's putting all of his weight, got that elbow right under Wheeler's chin, lock off that wind, really try to wear down Wheeler, Utah. Fistful of hair, it's there. Nice European uppercut. Man, he stepped all the way through on that one. Look at him, he's smiling now. Tony yeah. enjoys it. 
Uh, he's got Uta down. He has grounded this young man who has shown some glimpses of some really athletic ability. Wow. Came all the way through on that one. One, two. Gotta love the fight in Wheeler, Utah. You know, he knows he's in trouble in a pinning combination. He's trying to get out of it. A lot of times you're taking that kind of punishment. It's real easy just to lay there and get beat. I like the fight in Wheeler, Utah. Utah with a forearm, another one. That's another forearm. There's three, boy, and the gunner just absorbed every bit of that. Just cuts the momentum off before Wheeler can get yeah. anything going. Wheeler tries a ripcord here, picks him up. Inverted atomic drop, step up in Zaguri. It connected. It's, it's got uh, that Anderson down. Here, this is where Yuta excels up top. Look at that shotgun from the top. Oh, he's feeling the fire now, and so are the fans. And a reversal. Yuta ducks low, and a tope suicida on to the big man, and he just swatted him off in midair. Watch out, the young bucks. Oh, the super kick. From either side, stereo super kicks. Stereo super kick with about thirty thousand dollars worth of shoes, fifteen grand a foot. Oh man! This is brutal. This the way they act at ringside. This is I don't know. Anyway, back to the match here. Yuta pulls himself up, staggered. Here comes Carl Anderson. Oh, from the top. The stun gun. One, two, and three, and he wins it. Here is your winner, Carl Anderson. Well, Carl Anderson wins. He goes to seven and one here in AEW. Um, and somebody needs to control that Nick Jackson. He is completely out of control. Well, we know the thing about power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I think I saw that in the Spider-Man movie. And I've heard that many times. Here it is again, Paul. Super kick party. This is the sad part about it. She got Carl Anderson really didn't need that big consist. He had everything under control, and Wheeler Utah was putting up a good fight. And that's the problem. He put up too good a fight and paid the price. The winner over Wheeler Utah is Carl Anderson of the elite of the Good Brothers. Up next on Elevation, six-man competition, Dustin Rhodes, Big Shotty Lee Johnson, and Brock Anderson. This is a trio tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. To be accompanied to the ring by the enforcer, Arn Anderson, at a total combined weight of 630 pounds. The team of B. Shotty Lee Johnson, Brock Anderson, and the natural Dustin Rhodes. Boy, how about this crew coming out? That's a pretty good, talented crew right there. The youth, the experience, the legendary Arn Anderson, and Dustin Rhodes, who, by the way, had wrestled in more than 1,400 matches by the time Brock and Lee were born. <laughs> and that's quite a number. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to talk too much trash. I remember when Brock was born, too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go back to Justin. At a total combined weight of 574 pounds, a team of Adrian Alanis, Liam Gray, and Justin Carino. All right. Alanis Gray and Carino in this trios match. Second match, by the way, for Brock Anderson. He won his debut, if you'll recall, just, uh, well, last month on Dynamite, teaming with Cody.
to beat QT Marshall and Aaron Solo. And now Brock's going to start things out. Yeah, there you go. Be very cool. Stay in your corner. Let them do their thing. Well, you, you look at Brock and you go back and you look at Arn Anderson in the day, man. It's almost like a, you took a picture and photocopied it. Exactly. Like it was, like they photoshopped him in here. Wow, look at that. Great drop on the arm. Here's the cover. Brock trying to get a win early. There's Arn Anderson looking on, the legendary horseman, television champion, world tag team champion. The enforcer. The enforcer. Carino now battling back here. They make a tag, and we're going to see Liam Gray in the first time. Big shot is just so quick. Look at that arm drag. So quick and so athletic. Yeah, and fundamentally sound, man. Fundamentally sound. And that comes from training at the Nightmare Factory. And here's Brock again going to the arm. The veteran Dustin letting the two kids take control here. Nothing wrong with that. And here, well, this is textbook Anderson style here. Work on a part of the body, namely, mostly the arm. Just dismantling. Picks him up, Brock. Well, lean gray. Good go behind that time. Brock with a back elbow. Well, I thought he was going to try to execute a standing switch. He just back elbowed his way out of it. Gray kicked him in the head that time. And now Alanis with a sling blade takedown. Numbers game got to Brock a little bit there. Yeah. Good teamwork. One. Really good teamwork by Gray and Carino and Alanis. And this trios match here on Dark Elevation. Be smart. They'll keep Brock isolated in the corner. Keep him away from tagging Dustin or Big Shotty. Those two guys can change the tempo and the heartbeat. Alanis, big guy, picking him up, spun him over for a backbreaker, and then Gray comes in with a combination backbreaker, neckbreaker, and here comes Carino with a running lariat sliding down. One, two. Boy, and Brock, man, is in trouble here. Big trouble. Look at this. This is, this is just trying to... This, I think this is just anger that Brock Anderson is in this match, that he's the son of Arn Anderson, that he has to win. send a message and take a shot, but again, he's the son of Arn Anderson, and that kid's not just going to lay down and take it. He's going to fight back. Sure. And he knows he's going to get his goal, oh, going to get his best from everyone, right? Every time he gets in the ring. Like, man, that's that's Arn Anderson's son. I'm going to show him a thing or two. Yeah, they're going to find out. They might, they might learn a thing or two. Dustin and Shotty Lee encouraging. Brock to get over. Brock pulling his way up. Makes the tag, and here he comes, the natural. The legendary Dustin Rhodes, who can still go, guys. Yes, he can. That guy is all wheels. Into the ropes. Not today. And down goes Carino. Alanis. Dustin. Great spine buster. And now Gray comes in. Wow, that was a cutter on the way down. That's what Dustin does so well in these tag team matches. He manages all the people. Good cover. He manages all the people in the ring around him. He's always got his eyes open. Oh, over the top. Wow, what a spill. Dustin just too quick. Alanis hits the floor as well. Here comes Shotty Lee. Twisting and turning over the top. Love to see that impressive athleticism by Big Shotty Lee. He was so electrifying. And now here's double team here. Lee with a thrust kick. Dustin with a bulldog on Atlantis. And they're going to keep everybody out as Dustin gets the cover and the three count. Great tag team win. The winners of this match. The team of Lee Johnson, Brock Anderson, and the natural Dustin Rhodes. All right, once again, Paul, take a look at this. And then the Bulldog. Thrust kick, bulldog combination. 
And your winners in trios match Dustin Lee Johnson and again Brock Anderson who by the way is now 2 and 0 in his AEW career. Off to a great start. Stay tuned next tag team action and we're going to hear a rap I'm sure as the acclaimed Anthony Bowens and Max Caster will be in action. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first the acclaimed. Yo. 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 Hey. Yo. The acclaim we shorten your lifespan. What's this guy's gimmick? A straight white man? I'll break your nose like Devin Booker. Take you to the car and I'll treat you like a hooker. And this guy's over six feet. I'll stand on my money so you can kiss me. And there ain't no hide and make you whisper in my ear like your name's Joe Biden. Say it to me, baby, say it. The Acclaimed have arrived! Well, Paul, the next comment is yours as soon as Justin Roberts tells us this. Their opponents at a combined weight of 490 pounds, a team of PB Smooth and Matt Justice. Go ahead, bud. Well, I don't know what PB Smooth and Matt oh, Justice okay. thought they were signing up for, but... There's nothing like getting verbally abused by Max Caster. Man. And then right after that, seeing the intensity of Anthony Bowens. So uh, welcome to AEW, gentlemen. Uh, good luck and lace up your boots. Max Caster is celebrating his seven year anniversary in this sport on July 1st coming up. Anthony Bowens, eight years. Bowens, of course, coming back from his knee problems and he's back. And look at Max Caster, boy, that's. That was classic work right there. That's just good tag team communication. Bait and switch. PB wasn't so smooth there. They're going right to the knee of smooth. Smart move. PB's a big guy. Take his wheels out, bring him down to size. Always a smart move. Since entering AEW, the acclaimed Caster and Bowens at 20 wins under their belt. And Bowens is just, just relentless. Yeah, he's a phenomenal athlete. He really is. Really going after PB Smooth's left leg, attacking that knee joint. Dragon screw leg whip, putting down and and just there you see on the outside, Justice is trying. Right. I appreciate this. Yeah, can't hold it and look at him. You got to snatch it. Nice leg sweep drive by the choke. He's going to make a tag. Smooth's a big guy, and here comes Matt Justice, who trained by the way under the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. And a big boot for the big guy and a big nice head chop. Shoots Bowens in. Missed. A tag has been made and just didn't realize it and down he goes. He realized it a little bit too late. But that guy was sharp right there. Max Caster knew what was going on. This thing we got a great tag team partner you can depend on. They're always looking for opportunities. Max Caster and Anthony Bowens work amazing together. Well, he turned his attention, did Caster that time. Chops by Justice. Caster will just manhandling back to his own corner, and a tag is made here by Bowens. Boy, this is phenomenal tag team work. He's blocking him. Having been using that five count to his advantage. Yep. Here's the double team in. Shoots him through. Again, ahead of steam. To the midsection, swinging neck breaker, leg drop. Oh, PB went in. Oh, and then went down. Got caught. Andy Bowen smart up, went right to that leg they attacked earlier. PB smooth isn't so smooth right now. He's more like PB chunky. PB chunky. Here's the pickup. Down he goes. Time for the mic drop, buddy. Yo. Big elbow from Max Caster. It's over. Here are your winners. 
The acclaimed. The acclaimed. Top of the Boy, they make so it look easy, don't they, Tony? Yeah, they, they do, man. All the fans They're the having fun. There's the nothing like being young, and winning, and having fun. Here's the double team. Nice double team maneuver sets up Max Caster for the mic drop. A big heavy elbow off the top rope. Good hook of the leg. Well done, Acclaim. The Acclaim get the win. Their 21st win as a tag team. They continue to be one of the top teams in AEW. Up next on Elevation Women's Competition, Kylan King versus Rio. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making her way to the ring from Painesville, Ohio, Kylan King. Tremendous athlete, Kylan King. Yeah, Paul, she's. Uh, 12 and 5 is a record, three years experience, and really one of the biggest female competitors we have here in AEW. Yeah, she's definitely a powerhouse, strong, athletic, and getting better every week. This should be a great matchup in the women's division because she is going to face our former champion, one of our former champions. And her opponent from Shinagawa City, Japan. Ho! Kylie King's definitely going to have a size advantage here, but Rio's used to that. One of the best smiles in all of pro wrestling. She just lights up an arena. Don't let that smile fool you, though. She's a heck of a competitor. Yes, she is. Returned to AW in February after. 40 feet, 48 weeks away because of the pandemic. Our first AEW Women's World Champion on our debut episode of Dynamite on October 2nd of 2019, which seems like decades ago. It does. <laughs> it does for, because it does. of the pandemic. Uh, that was back over October 2nd, 2019 in Washington. And she's not afraid to tie up against a much bigger opponent here. Clean one, King Smart using that power. Nice clean break. I like to see that every now and then. Somebody got a heart. I don't mind this approach. No, I'm not rushing in, making a mistake. Let Rio come to you. Duck under by Rio. There's Kylie King, that amateur, just float over, grab that head, and control the smaller opponent. Again, another clean break. Kylan coming off of a win over Valentina Rossi last month on Dark. She's won eight of her last ten matches. And look at this. <laughs> yeah, got to reach up here, girl. Uh, 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 that's, a, that's a page out of my playbook. <laughs> oh, 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 that's not. That's, <laughs> that's happened too. Okay, a reversal. Rio hits. Rio cartwheels out of the way. Look at this quick this drop kick by that's, the former champ. Rio gets so dangerous. She gets that momentum and gets moving. Look at the speed she gets. Love that speed from corner to corner with that running knee strike. And now she is up top. Here goes Rio flying, cross body, caught. A little bit too much time up top. Oh, Kylan finishes it off with a backbreaker. This is backbreaker. One, two. two. Kylan took that little hesitation to smile to the crowd. And Gave Kylan King enough to get her whereabouts. 11 inches and 67 pounds heavier than Rio is Kylan King, and she is using every bit of that right now. Every bit of that. And that's hard fought poundage in the gym, too. Absolutely, it is. Trained by Billy Gunn, the Dudleys, Gangrel. She's had some great training. She has been forming a partnership with Big Swole and Red Velvet. RSK, if you will. And she can make a big name for herself with a win here. Look at this. Onto the arm. Boy, she's got her all tied up here. She does. That's a pretzel knot for sure. A pretzel knot for sure. Got one leg pushed up against the left arm. 
pulling back on the other one. Look at that. How that left that left arm of Rio is wrapped around the left foot of Kylan King. Yeah, I don't think my arm goes back that far. Tom. Man. That may have changed the complexion of this match. Rio left arm is hurting here. The clubbing forearm across the forehead. One, two, got a two count. Kylan just needs to keep her composure here. Use her size to her advantage. Not try to get too fancy. Kylan's got a very colorful look too. We don't talk enough about that. Red hair, blue and green on her tights. Blue stripe across her face. Very unique. Very warrior princessish. Yes, absolutely. Well said. Missed the lariat. And much power. Yeah, boy, she's trying to roll her up. And she, one, two. And Rio with a matrix. A matrix mover. She is just so deceptive and quick. Oh, they I lured her in with a drop toe hold across the ropes. And here she goes again. Here comes Rio. Well done. Oh, and the fans respond. Up on top, big crossbody on Kylan King. Two, and Kylan kicks out. The power that Kylan King kicked out on that kick out. She sent poor Rio halfway across the ring. Oh, King. Reverse spin kick that time. Nice vertical suplex. Kylan King quickly to a cover. One, two, tries to keep her down, but cannot. See a little frustration on Kylan King's part here. I think she felt she should have won this a while ago. Rio staying there, kicking out when she can. Sends Kylan in. Rio rolls her up. Double stomp. Right in the breadbasket on that one. Kylan in trouble. Tries to roll out of the way, but she is still down, and here goes Rio. Rio so dangerous when she's up top. Missed the double stomp that time. Oh, Kylan picked her up. Caught her in midair. Forward roll, and Kylan King at 6-1. And 165 is going to try to take flight here. Oh, she wasted too much time. Rio with the running double knee. Samato, one, two, three. Now, winner of this match, Rio. She found an opening for it, Paul, and she got it in and got her 14th win. That's a veteran move on Rio's part. Let Kylan King make the mistake. Just avoid that size on that big splash that Kylan went for. Got out of the way and used gravity to her advantage. That really lit the crowd up. Double run at me. Look at the jar of the impact of both these hitting Kylan King right in the chin. Rio's off to the pay window. She sure is. She's back on her winning ways. Rio with a big win here on Elevation over Kylan King. Tag team action on deck. It's the Varsity Blondes with Julia Hart coming up next. Tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by Julia Hart at a combined weight of 453 pounds. Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., the Varsity Blondes. It's definitely not hard to get excited when the Varsity Blondes come into the arena. Young, talented, athletic. Putting on the show. There's something else. Varsity Blondes with a dynamic 14 and 4 mark as a team here at AEW as we go back to Justin. And their opponents have combined with a 441 pounds, a team of Aaron Ward and Jake Logan. Bigford and Logan here, and watch out. 
Good for Bigfoot and Logan. Yeah. Try and take advantage. Now, for Brian Pillman, this coming Wednesday on Dynamite, watch out. Live on TNT, he really, as the old cliche goes, wait a minute now, here we go. One with a sliding drop kick, one with a tope suicida on either end. Brian Pillman Jr. has his shot at gold, but he also has to go through a man who has been wrestling like a man possessed. Miro, the TNT champion, will defend that title against Brian Pillman Jr. coming up on Wednesday. Man. Incredible opportunity for Brian Pillman Jr. Though. Got to be careful though, man. I'd say it's just. I mean, you don't you don't want to get hurt here in a tag team match, and, and I know he's a competitor. Wow. I know he's tough. I mean, these guys stand a real legit chance of becoming tag team champions. Yes, they do. Yes, and they do. And you would hate to see something unfortunate happen wrestling a monster like Nero sure. that would take that tag team opportunity away. Yeah. I agree. But, yeah. Still, At the same though, time, Brian Pillman's going to get in there and fight. Yes, he is. He, and it's going to be it's going to be a hell of a match. It's going to be a great con ooh, great contrast in style. Discus forearm shot, crossbody from the top, and a win that quickly for the Varsity Blonde. Didn't take him long. No way this match. The Varsity Blondes. I tell you, I've gotten to know Brian Pillman Jr. really well, and I love his attitude. He's the type of kid that would fight a Bengal Tiger in a phone booth. He's got no fear. Bingo being the operative word. Brian Pillman and Miro Wednesday night. Look at that athleticism. Great tag team work. Like Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. Such a great tag team the way they work together. Question is, can Brian Pillman dethrone Miro? We'll find out Wednesday night on Dynamite for the TNT Championship. But right now, the Varsity Blondes get their 15th win. Up next on Elevation Women's Competition, Thunder Rosa. This next bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the graveyards of Tijuana, Mexico. Thunder Rosa! One of my favorites here in Elevation, Tony, Thunder Rosa. Just love saying her name. Yeah, man, I don't know if you noticed, I've got a very young Thunder Rosa fan. There you go, in the oh, stands, how about that? That's awesome. Already inspiring someone to be greater. Yeah, love absolutely. it. Absolutely. And Thunder Rosa at 15 and two, Her opponent from Long Island, New York, Catalina Perez. Catalina Perez, her opponent here, looking for her first win in AEW. Thunder Rosa, it's an amazing story. And the fact that she has been so successful, only six years wrestling, it looks like she's been 15, 20 years. She the way, does. The way she moves in the ring. The way she moves in the ring, the way she handles herself as a professional outside of the ring, too. She's got that poise and confidence like a real veteran. Roll up that time, Perez got out of it. Wow. Forearm, Forearm shots. shots. Absolutely. Catalina Perez laying them in. European uppercut. Into the ropes goes Thunder Rosa. Three, she drags her down. Nicely done. She just really put all her weight right on that elbow joint. Just pulled Catalina right down. There's so many different ways that she can. Win a match, man. This she's, is she's really just showing off her technique. Yes, right she now. is. I love it. And she's a fighter. Yes, she is. And of course, what's, she, the, what's the old term? A scrapper. Scrapper. Oh, wow! I heard that chop all the way over here. Yeah. Big uppercut from Thunder Rosa. Chop. Oh man, Catalina's fighting back here. Catalina is a heavy hitter. Yes, she. Oh boy, the kick that time. Display of martial arts skill. Missed the pump kick. Tried to pick her up. Oh, Russian leg sweep. And still hasn't let go. Rolled all the way through. 
Trap the arm, trap the neck. Is this a Peruvian necktie? Yes, it is. It's the Peruvian Calvera choke. Calavera choke, I'm sorry. Here is your winner, Thunder Rosa. The Peruvian Calavera choke. I like Peruvian necktie. But correctly, it is a Calavera choke. I'm sure Catalina Perez didn't like it. Oh, she got out of town real quick. You end up in that, you tap. Thunder Rosa ranked number three for two straight weeks. And looking to get the AEW Women's World Title off of Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Next, great singles matchup as the Blade will take on Chuck Taylor of Best Friends. This bout is set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by the Bunny from Buffalo, New York, weighing 228 pounds, the Blade. The Blade, that vicious mercenary with your favorite sidekick, the Bunny. It's amazing how quiet you get when she's around, Tony. I know how you feel. I know we, I, I, even I've talked to with Mark, Mark Henry, the world's strongest man. You guys get creeped out when you see Abaddon. No. Yeah. This girl with her head tilted to the side and looking right through you. Oh, it's like she doesn't have a soul. That's exactly right. Yeah. She yeah. doesn't have a soul. Look at that. She tried to. Should be a great matchup, though. This opponent from Murray, Kentucky, weighing 217 pounds. The Kentucky Gentleman, Chuck Taylor. Chuck Taylor making his way to the ring, and you, you might wonder where is his partner, Trent? Well, this past Friday, Trent, all oh, the fight goes on. We'll talk about Trent here in a minute because he has sustained an injury or kind of like a, it's been an injury that's nagged you for quite a while. Well, it's just stuff that builds up over time. Sure. That's the thing. It's not necessarily one bump or one incident. It's a multitude of incidents and a multitude of bumps over time. Trent has uh, had a spinal fusion C5, 6, and 7. He could be out for a, a little bit. Spinal stenosis. So Chuck is out here all alone here. And it's gonna, this could be, end up being a hell of a match, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Chuck. Chuck. Stay Smart away from that girl. Move. Smart move. Yeah, I, no, no, yeah. stay. I would, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she did her job, though, didn't she? She did her job. She, she got Chuck's attention away from. See, that's a freak. Uh, my, you know, I'm just going to keep my mouth okay, shut. Okay, that, that's. Yeah. And that's a hell of a fighter there on the floor, man. That <laughs> is. That is a true blue mercenary. Yes, sir, buddy. Big chop by the Kentucky gentleman, Chuck, by the way. Eight and one of his last nine matches. Five and one in his last six singles matches. Oh, the big power slam Great by Blade. Power slam by the Blade. Well, he snapped into that. I always love those power slams that are executed like that, like Buzz Sawyer could do. Wow, Buzz Sawyer. Holy smokes. Yeah, I know that's a name from the Wayback Machine. It sure is, buddy. I remember his power slam was just so impressive. The Mad Dog, and right cross that time from Blade. And now you see you're looking right in because the the knee, the shin is pointing the back of the neck, and he's just yanking up on the head. Yanking up on the nose, Tony. That part just rips the front of the face off. Tremendous athlete, tremendous condition yeah, Blade's man. in. Blade is in phenomenal condition. Right. And, and a veteran, too, by the way. The Blade is 22 years experience. One, two. They faced each other one time before in singles competition. He beat Chuck Taylor. That was back in 2014. 
so they know each other obviously in singles and in tag team of course the butcher and the blade Knife oh, that cop. really wow. knocked the wind out of Chuck Taylor. Blade knows it, goes over, steps on his neck, makes it harder to breathe. And now, member of the Hardy family office. Now, that tells me that Matt Hardy is very instrumental in getting big matches signed for the Blade, but also very instrumental in taking away some of the Blade's money. Well, we know it's going to be at least 30%. At least 30%. And who knows? It may be more, and he may tell us one. He may be lying to us, basically. Oh, Matt Hardy lie? Come on, Tony. And the blade again, just relentless between the shoulder blades and the small of the back there. Working those kidneys over. He'll roll him over, try to get a pin. Not a bad try that time, but got a two count. It's going to take more than that to hold down the Kentucky gentleman. Blade knows the blade's a little frustrated with him. I think Blade thought this was going to be done a lot sooner. Nice forearm shot. Back and forth they go. Forearm shots by Chuck. Chuck up against the ropes. Here we go. Here comes the blade, and he missed. Oh, Chuck with a big right hand. Staggered the blade. Comes back fighting. Back and forth they go. Love seeing this, buddy. Just toe to toe is what we just saw momentarily. Moved by Chuck yeah, Taylor. Soul food boot that time. Going to go up top. Chuck Taylor at 6'2, 217, is going to try to take flight here. Landed on his feet. Picks him up. Oh, and drives him down with the awful waffle. No, he didn't get it. Huge kick out by Blade. I thought that was it. Awful waffle is usually success in the bag. Here's Chuck with a double stomp at the top. That might do it. It did not, boy. Bunny was climbing up on the apron on that. The Kentucky gentleman without his partner Trent nursing an injury. Going it alone. I wonder where Chuck Taylor's head's at right now. Is he yeah. worried about Trent? Blade miss. Here's Chuck picking him up. I'm sure right now he's worried about the blade. Blade. Oh, he's in trouble here. He knows Wasn't it got out. Wow. wow. Wow, that was a thunderous chop. Everybody heard that in the arena. Good high knee by Chuck Taylor. Just using the momentum of his opponent with that. Oh, here it comes. But no, one, two, three, and she was holding the feet. Here is your winner, The Blade. The Blade gets the win using the ropes, and then the bunny helped with the feet on the ropes, and Chuck's had enough. Oh, and here comes TH2, members of the Hardy family office. And look at the bunny skipping around. Pure chaos. The bunny loves chaos. And Chuck just was. And now, here's Orange Cassidy. Oh, boy, they take a powder on that one. Well, he took his sunglasses off. He's ready for business. We saw what they did to Orange Cassidy last week. The Blade in TH2. And he comes out, and they quickly leave. Well, again, Trent with that injury not able to come out, but Orange Cassidy with purpose and meaning coming out, helping Chuck Taylor up. Well, Blade wins this one, Paul, but the fight is far from over. Now, Blade gets his 10th win, by the way. Up next, six-man competition, Private Party and Matt Hardy versus Dark Orders, Alex Reynolds, Allen Five Angels, and Colt Cabana. This is a trios tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit.
approaching the ring at a total combined weight of 574 pounds, the team of Private Party and Matt Hardy. Is that like a purple karate belt around his waist? What's that purple sash? Uh, that is... Uh, style? That's style. Okay. That may be something... I, I don't go to the club, so maybe... Uh, I don't know. I don't either. So... Last club I went to was Studio 54. Yikes. I'm just kidding. I'm not that <laughs> just kidding. I make a joke. That's okay, that's, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Well, they ju they've just come to the club. That's what they want everybody to know. I guess so, but to me, it seems like you're giving an opponent a weapon to use against you. And that's exactly right. Join the Dark Order. And their opponents, at a total combined weight of 613 pounds, the team of Alex Reynolds, Allen, Five Angels, and Colt Boom Boom Cabana. Oh! Well, and we're already, getting this party started. Already, Allen Five Angels gets involved in this. And he is, he's being attacked here now by Matt Hardy. Twist of fate, no, Colt Cabana. And Reynolds came in. Oh, and a double suplex. Tony, is the bell rung yet? I don't think so. <laughs> Chaos and pandemonium here. Double hip toss in over the top rope. And down and out to a private party. That's right, it can't start until we signal the dark order. Matt Hardy's a little frustrated. Says he's going to show him how to do it. All right, go, go earn that 30%, Matt Hardy. There. Well, I'm sure it's more if he's wrestling. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. I'm sure it probably goes the other way where he gets 70 and they might get 30. And there he goes, twist of fate again. He tempted no. Allen, uh, five angels rolled him up and got a two count, says Rick Knox. Got him up. Boy, look at Allen. Angels counter everything here. One, two, and a two count. Boy, he's come to, he has come to fight. Great drop kick. So far, he's had an answer for everything Matt Hardy's thrown at him. Absolutely, yes. Look at those big shots Allen Five Angels is digging in. He's lifting Matt Hardy up off the feet with those gut shots. Oh, boy. How about that one? That was a good follow through, Lariat. That was great. Fun Allen Five Angels around right in the air. That is an evil smile. Into the corner. No place found Angels goes. So he fights his way up, got the foot up. Now he needs to move. See what happens? Oh! It's like Private Party just made a wish. Yeah, buddy. Allen Five Angels was in the corner. He fought him off, but then stayed in the corner, unfortunately, and that happened. Uh, that situational ring awareness. Boy, you, you know what, Paul? You, you're so right about that. Ring awareness. Sometimes the guys get focused on what's in front of them and forget what's behind them. Snapmare over. This is uh, Isaiah Cassidy using the do rag. And now there you go, Paul. I knew there was something else. Of course. Not my first rodeo. And now shelves that. Boy, Rick Knox got his work cut out for him in this match. He sure does. Rick Knox needs eyes in the back of his head. Tag has been made. Here comes Mark Quinn. The best hair in wrestling, by the way. I say that because it's, it's got to take some time to do that. You can't just. Well, I can't do it at all. No, I, no I know that. But still, you got to you got to spend some time on that. Definitely got to appreciate looking in the mirror. Yeah, man, I just, I, he just, and he is, he is ultra, ultra cool, and he knows it. And he knows it. Keyword, knows it. Yeah. And those belts, man, speaking of belts, he can, he's belting Allen Five Angels, who, by the way, wrestled a very good match at the start of this. He countered everything, like we said, that Matt already had, but now he desperately needs to make a tag. Wow, nowhere to go for Angels yeah, tag. They, they got him buried deep in enemy territory right yes, now. Yes, he does. And here's Mark Quinn with an elbow, and here comes the boss. 
I'm also looking at those fancy belts they have holding up their pants. Fancy, man. All fancy that diamond belt. and glitter. You can't get the tag championships. I just get a fancy belt to hold up your pants. Double axe sandal, double back suplex. Double kip up. And little, little bump, babes. Little bump of the one, two. Which uh, bumping, you know, the fist to the neck became kind of fashionable during the pandemic. It's still weird now. What do you do? Do you bump elbows, bump fists, shake hands? What do we go back to? Well, I think you shake hands. I, I hope we go that. I hope we get back there. I yeah. look forward to we go back and we can actually see somebody and give them a hug when we mess Yeah, up. that's, you know, that's always been big in wrestling. One, one two. First you know in wrestling, known for years, right? Give them a hug. Plus, for somebody you don't know, it's easier to pick their wallet when you're hugging them. Not that I would know what he did about that. <laughs> Angels. Nice insert, Gurry Allen, five Angels. Yeah, step up now. He's crawling his way to the corner. Tag is made. Here comes Cassidy. Cuts him off nicely. As he's smart, get him back in his corner. Back in the corner. Got the now. He got the foot up. Now he needs the roll, and he and again. He Wish got the, number two. Again, he whoa. He turned it around on Mark Quinn. I'm not going to fool Allen Five Angels twice. And he turns this into a pinning combination and only got a two. Wow, great wrestling that time for Allen Five Angels. Cold Cabana pounding the top turnbuckle. It's over here, kid. Make the tag. Reaching out to Reynolds, and Reynolds comes in. He goes right, right after Matt Hardy. Smart move. Big pump kick. Soul of a boot to the face and Isaiah goes down. Here goes Reynolds again with a great drop kick. Face first. It's that momentum that Alex Reynolds creates so fast. Tag is made to Cole Cabana. Tope Suicida. Cabana comes in. He ducks low from private party. Second rope moonsault. How about that from Cole Cabana? Flip, flop, and fly, get them both. Tag is made. Angels back in. Big flying crossbody. One, two, whoa. And Isaiah barely got out of that pole. He was in a lot of trouble. He was all by himself. Man. Big trios matchup here on Elevation. And a fine one to boot. Oh, oh, Matt, Reynolds got up top. And he got a face full of apron that time. Matt Hardy, right place at the right time. So right now he's in the wrong place. Oh, boy. Cole ben, Cabana goes yeah. for a ride. And he's back turned to private party, and he paid for it. And you can see that it, Allen Five Angels now is all alone. Just His like partners that. are down, Paul. Yeah, just like that momentum shift. I don't know if Punk and Allen Five Angels is the way to go. This guy is a scrapper. And he is firing back. Reverse spin kick that time. Here he sends. Nope. Good move by Cassidy. Elevates him to the top. And a back elbow. And still, you see Matt Hardy pulling himself up. Still now, it's basically three on one right now. He's fighting off Matt Hardy. Here comes Mark Quinn up top. Tierra's. Oh! Into the one, two, three. That was impressive. Here are your winners. The team of Matt Hardy and Private Party. Into the gin and juice and buddy. It was a win for Private Party and Matt Hardy over the Dark Order. And that's some of the best I've seen Private Party work together. That was impressive how they pulled that off. I agree, man. That was great. Matt Hardy doing what he does best. Stirring up chaos. So Cassidy, Mark Quinn, and uh, Matt Hardy now. Three and one in trios competition. Matt Hardy in 2021 gets his 12th win here over the Dark Order. Former women's world champion Akaro Shida next against Rekka Tahaka here on Elevation. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. 
approaching the ring from Kanagawa, Japan, Hikaru Shida. Phenomenal record for Hikaru Shida, the former AEW Women's World Champion, now ranked number five in the rankings. You can better believe she is in the mix to dethrone Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, but right now, she has a matchup. Her opponent from American Samoa, Rekka Tahaka. And here is Samoan Rekka Tahaka, who we've been most impressed with. And here we go. That's aggressive call and elbow tie-up. You know, she has got always has a pleasant look on her face, but man, she can she can ratchet it up, man. Oh, she's a fierce competitor. Yeah. I think that that relaxed look, that casual look is part of her tool for deception. Right. She's a very tough fighter. Held that women's championship for how long? Yeah, a year. Longest reigning AEW champion. Boy, and Tahaka. She will return boy. Return fire. There you go. There's the aggressiveness that we know that Hikaru Shida has. Look at this hair pull. My God. And again. It's that Samoan temper kicking in. Not going to work there. And she still has a she still has a handful of hair here. Well, there you go. She lets it go finally. As they're hung up, try to punk kick. Caught by Sheeta. Uh oh. Oh, Tahaka's in big trouble now. He can blow out a knee like this, Paul. This is a career ender. Yeah. This is very serious. She caught her with a knee lift on the hamstring. I thought she was going to just try to pull that right over the top. Well, the car, she just got a lot more class than that. She's not going to take advantage of something like that. Here goes a running knee strike. Boom. Running knee lift, if you will. Definitely knee lift. So, Hawk, as you can tell, man, the effects of that. Sheeta now. Oh, boy. She's going to try to hoist the Hawk up. The Hawk up. Holding her own here on the apron. Head first to the turnbuckle. To Hawk again. Got that pump kick in that time. Boy, she sure did. Rekka Tahaka has Sheeta down and may have her moment here. Here she goes. Wow, big chop. Cover one, two. No, Sarah didn't get it. We could fight between these girls. Yes, it is. I, we expected that. Tahaka looking for her first win. Moving out of the way, Sheeta. Gut wrench, ripcord. Kick in the back of the head, if you will, and a pickup and a suplex. Sheeta spins. Tahaka, big headbutt. It staggers. Sheeta. Wait, Tahaka. I thought for a moment she could win this thing. A pickup. Another headbutt. Wow, that just drops the Carl Sheeta right yeah, to the Yeah, Sheeta's in trouble here, guys. Two big headbutts from Tahaka. Wow. Follow away slam. Follow away crucifix. One, two, no. Rolls her over. One, two, no. Great counter move that time. Oh, Sheena wiped her out with that one. It's the timing on Hikaru Sheena's part, just picking her shots very carefully and precisely. Great knee. The side katana. Of head. Side of the head. And it's over. No winner of this match. Hikaru Sheena. Well, Rekka Tahaka definitely pushed Hikaru Sheena on that one. A couple of times we thought Rekka Tahaka might pull out a win. 
The car Oshida pulled out the katana. The car Oshida to the paint window. Again. Wow. That knee right to the side of the head. Well delivered. Her knees are lethal. Be it the Tamashi or that for the win. Tonight on Elevation, it'll be Kingston and Penta against TH2, employees of Matt Hardy. And we know that Hardy is looking for payback after they stopped him from finishing off Christian Cage last week on Dynamite. We know that Matt Hardy is looking to cost them any chance at the Tag Team Championship shot. Eddie Kingston, Penta El Cerro Biero against Angelico and Jack Evans tonight in our main event on Elevation. Your main event is a tag team bout set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 377 pounds, Jack Evans on Helico, the hybrid two. Boy, what a talented tag team they are. Such a unique combo. Yeah. Just love Angelico. He's got that, he's in his own space, he's in his own place. <laughs> Got that little groove. I like that in his own space. He really is, isn't he? He is, man. And their opponents to be accompanied by Alex Adra Hantes at a combined weight of 442 pounds. The team of Eddie Kingston and Penta Ilsado. Uh, you mentioned earlier about Dynamite returning to TNT this Wednesday for Pente El Cerro Miedo and Eddie Kingston there, of course, with the one and only Alex Abrahantes. They have a World Tag Team Title Eliminator Tournament against the Young Bucks, or Eliminator Match, I should say, against the Young Bucks, which means if they can beat the Young Bucks Wednesday night, they're going to get a shot at the World Tag Team Championship. What an ovation for Kingston. Definitely a fan favorite here in AEW. Yeah, and yeah. Guy's got grit. And how about Alex, man? <laughs> That's your buddy. You yeah, just love man. him, don't you? Uh, Alex, you know, uh, we don't talk about enough what Alex means to Penta. He's an interpreter. He helps manage his affairs. Takes a lot of trust to do that. Yes, it does. So Eddie Kingston and Jack Evans. Okay, this is a wrestling match, not a breakdance. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah, Eddie Kingston is not impressed at all. That says, uh, no, Ed, no, Eddie, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Come on, there you go. There you go. Nah, man, I was talking. If Eddie was going to start the breakdance, I was going to say, what the hell? Jack Evans might want to be careful. Getting Eddie Kingston upset is not a good idea. It's kind of like slapping a junkyard dog in the face. It might not turn out well for you. All right, Eddie's doing the right thing. Just stay away from the corner here, right? All right. Let them do their antics. Let them do. Don't don't play their game. He's play your game. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Eddie Kingston <laughs> thought about that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked for Eddie Kingston. He got Jack Evans to play his game. How do you not love Eddie Kingston, huh? Oh, man. <laughs> He's a wild cannon. Oh, Lordy. Penta. Bring him in. Mr. Offense, here he comes. Oh, step up from the outside. Climbing the top, so fluid. Crossbody, roll through. Ducks through, look at this. Springboard into a arm drag takedown. Tilt the world backbreaker. He's amazing. <laughs> the things that he can do, I say amazing every time. I know, but he really is. This is not enough adjectives to describe an offense like Pentis. And you hear this fan, the fans come alive and respond to it. 
<laughs> Here comes Kingston back in. Drop to a hold. Eddie. Holds him up. Penta comes in. Ooh. And Helico's rolled up. One, two, and Eddie and Penta almost won it on that. It shows how fluid that Penta and Eddie are. These guys work fantastic together. Eddie, Eddie Kingston. That's where you don't want to be against Kingston. No, you don't want to get in a slug match no. with Eddie Kingston. Tied up against the ropes where you have no way to cover up, no way to. Here comes Jack over the top. And Mike poses his note, get back in. Meanwhile, he's getting. Is he biting Eddie on the scalp that time? Couldn't see from that angle. I, I thought he was. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. I, I agree with that. And here's Angelico. We, we talked so much about his wrestling style. There's many different styles of wrestling. One thing he can do is divert the attention of the referee, allowing Jack to pepper Eddie with kicks and blows, and Eddie just hanging on here. This is crowd chant for Eddie Kingston. Love it. Coming off with a knee from the top. Lucky on that one. I was worried Jack Evans was going to come across that yeah. arm. Jack Evans can do it. Double axe handle into the chest. Jack Evans unorthodox style. But successful. Look at that knee. Very successful. Wait, right, great hang time on the one, one, game, one count only. Eddie quickly got out of that. But Jack was able to hit, send him to the ropes, and then leap in the air and hang there to connect with that knee. It's amazing what he can do. Here's a tag. We've seen over the past few weeks, too, Jack Evans getting a lot better ring shape. Like it's really coming around for him. He's firing on all cylinders now. Really compliments Angelico. Angelico was a thousand and three holds, he knows. Oh, yeah, man. Master of submissions. Trapping the leg with the hand. Oh, wow. Trapping the hand in the knee joint. <laughs> uh, and Penta says enough of that nonsense. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's just kind of setting him up for that Navarro death roll that Angelico uses. He tags in Jack Evans. Light on his feet comes in. Jack Evans really needs to get a hold of Kingston, get him away from Penta's corner. Sometimes tag teams forget that. You've got to keep your opponent isolated. Wow, Eddie picks him up, slams him down. Now Eddie just needs to roll over. Alex Abrahantes encouraging Eddie from the side to roll over to where you hear my, where I'm pounding. He does, he makes a tag, and here comes Penta El Cerro Miero. Sling blade. Another one. TH2 in trouble here, and here comes Penta again. Ducks one, drop kicks another one. Oh, Monkey flips him into the corner. It's pretty bad when you get hit with your own tag team partner. Yeah, buddy. He may be going for the fear factor here, but it was broken up by Jack. Pump handle pickup. Whoa, one, two, no, and a save. Good job on Penta's part. Remember who was legal. Remember on Wednesday, their eliminator match against the Young Bucks. A loss here would certainly stop any momentum they may have. Penta's going to once again try to go to that fear factor, that package pile driver of his, arm breaker. Now Penta in trouble here, double team. Oh, neck breaker into a back breaker and a pickup. Face first goes Penta. TH2 can win this. One, two, whoa. Big kick out by Penta right there. Spinning backflip moonsault that time. Those guys work hard to get it done. Yeah. They definitely don't lack in uh, flair or originality. Eddie comes in, meets a knee that time from Angelico. 
Tried a 450 that time, landed on his feet. Eddie, the little half and half that time. And now he's got him caught. Let's see if he can get it. His partner is still down. Pick up, yes! Fear factor, one, two, three. Great pass. The team of Eddie Kingston and Penta El Cero Miedo. I say it every time I see it. That fear factor finish looks devastating. Here it is again. Ducky, sling blade. And here's fear factor. Man. So now on Wednesday night, the Young Bucks have to contend with Penta, Eddie Kingston, and of course, Alex Everhunt is in their corner. And you gotta bet Eddie Kingston can't wait to get his hands on the Young Bucks any opportunity he can. Your winners here on Elevation.